Oh, I'm smiling for a good reason. Welcome back to Marley and Hops. I'm George. This is our update on the Audible Proof and Trail Hydrometer. And I just want, I, I needed to show this to you because we got it working. Amazing. So first of all, I want to say thanks to Mark again, uh, my mentor in everything computer and a whole lot of other stuff. Um, this collaboration has really gone off the chain. Uh, and also a thank you to everybody else out there because a lot of your comments uh, went a long way in guiding us in the right direction um, and giving us a, a whole lot of information that we otherwise would have had to discover on our own. So great work, everybody. Thank you. Here's where, remember, what our challenge was. It was, and it was relatively, I thought, simple. Um, remember, I had, here's a picture of, of, of a parrot with a hydrometer inside of it, and we knew certain things. You know, we knew that, you know, you could see here, because it's graduated, and, and all you had to do was look, and you'd see what the alcohol proof was, or percentage, or proof, either one. Um, and, but the problem we had was we couldn't hear it. How do, we, how do we take that value and convert it into something that can be heard so that someone who cannot see gets the same information? Well, we had to theorize a bunch of different things, and the one we came up with was measuring the distance between the top of the hydrometer and a known point. We used, what we did was we just put a, a tube so that we'd have a known point, which is here, and a known resting point, which is right here on top of the outspout. So that's always going to be the same. And we put a time of flight sensor inside up here, and it would shoot a beam, hit this reflector, which is nothing more than a plastic cap, and then reflect back and sense it, and then measure the time it took for that to happen, and convert that into a distance. And that was, believe it or not, that was real. We're like, oh yeah, that's simple. Um, and then convert that value into a usable number, a proof. And so that works well. And, but the problem was is that we could do that. We could see it on the screen. I mean, it was doing everything it was supposed to do, but we still couldn't hear it. So we had to do work more with it. It took several phases. We were like six or seven uh, times. We, we know of probably a thousand things that fail easily. <laughs> Um, and a lot of them are, were, were just user error, you know, dumb stuff, you know, bad pin connections, uh, you know, di uh, wrong voltage, uh, got it resolved. Now, here's what we use. We use the, the uh, Arduino Uno. For those who aren't familiar, real brief, an Arduino Uno is nothing more than a microcontroller or processor uh, controller, eh, whatever. Someone will correct that. Uh, but what this does is you can load a program on it and then remove it from the computer, add power to it, and it'll just run that program over and over and over and over and over again. And it's really neat to have. Um, this is the Nano. It's this, but it's really small. It does a lot of stuff too, okay? Oh, and once you get into this, I mean, it is it is. It's like Greek uh, until you play with them for a while, and all of a sudden things just start to make sense. Uh, so what we did was I got the red board from SparkFun. And the reason I got that was because the time of flight sensor was, so I got the time of flight sensor and I got an Arduino Uno, which just happens to be red instead of blue. Uh, and I got this all hooked up and then I purchased also an LM386. This is an audio amplifier. Uh, we could have just, I still can, just hook the speaker directly to the Uno, but it's really low. Um, it only provides so much power and this can only enhance that by so much. So. Uh, I've got to find another solution for volume control, which I will. And also, uh, so that it has data, uh, we put a micro SD card on here. And these are relatively easy to hook up. I, there's just like four, four what's that, six wires? Uh, yeah, there's six wires there. And it tells you where to put every one of them. And so what we have now is we have an audible proof and trail hydrometer. Inside here is the sensor that, oh yeah, there we go, that shines at, that, that shines a, an invisible light, a laser. Um, and here you go, there's the top of the, and yes, it does change the weight of it, so I know that we have to calibrate it, it's just a little bit different. 
Um, I put a window on the side so that if someone blind is using this and you've got a sighted assistant, they can also look in there and kind of verify, validate um, what your proof is. Um, of course, if you got that little sensor on that little cap on top, that's going to be off just a little bit. So don't rely on that 100%. Um, rely on the audible portion because it's measuring by millimeters. Okie doke. Here's what I'll do is I'm going to demonstrate this for you. I'm just going to plug it in uh, because once you add power to the Arduino, it just starts running that program. That's what it's supposed to do. Mike, you are going to be extremely happy with this. Here, listen to this. 180 proof. 180 proof. So what we're going to do now is that I'm going to demonstrate to you that this thing changes. So if I just add a little bit more water, and that changes the, vo the volume in here. And proof. 139 proof. Now it's 139. So... I got just a few challenges left, but I'm so excited because this thing now works. We've proved, we've gone through the whole theory of this. Pro Thank you again to everybody in the community. We, we are now able to offer this to uh, those who are visually impaired, blind. This is a working prototype. I've got a lot of, a, a little more things to do. You know, I'm going to put a button on it so that when you push the button, uh, it speaks. And then after it speaks, it stops. Uh, which it just makes sense. You don't want it to just constantly over and over. You, you may, who knows. I'm going to put a volume control on it so you can increase or decrease the volume. Uh, and, of course, we want to package this up into something that's small and unique <laughs> that is usable and maybe even just make it part of the parrot. Who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll come up with all of that. But I wanted to share that with you because this is so exciting. Oh, excuse me. It, it took a couple of weeks of late night coordination and... Um, with collaboration with Mark. Mark, you're amazing. I appreciate all that help. Um, all I can say is to everybody out there, thank you for helping us make this happen. Success. Happy distilling. And yes, every bit of this will be available. Uh, I'll do a video on how to assemble it, how to calibrate it, how to set all those things. Um, down to the nitnoid. So if you want to make one at home, you can make your own. Uh, the code is open source now. Uh, we will offer that to anybody and everybody. So this is amazing. Um, just stick with us.